Aaron Douglas and the Harlem Renaissance by Cindy Lemons. Aaron Douglas was born in Topeka, Kansas in 1899, born to laborer parents. He overcame many obstacles to pursue his passion for art and ideas. One of the first African American artists to portray racial themes within the context of modern art and his pursuit of justice through his paintbrush continues to influence artists today. He was called the father of black American art. He was the first president to the Harlem Artists Guild. He combined styles of modern European, ancient Egyptian, and West African art. He was hired to illustrate for magazines and books, including The Crisis, Opportunity, Vanity Fair, Theater Arts Monthly, and Fire, but only one issue was done. Double Consciousness. In the reading it was stated black artists and intellectuals did not desire to separate themselves from the so-called dominant culture, as did for example Marcus Garvey's Back to Africa movement, but sought to negotiate a position and identity as both Negro and American. Webb Du Bois in Souls of Black Folk said two unreconciled strivings, two warring souls in one dark body. Douglas stated, our problem is to conceive, develop, establish an art era, not white art painting black. Let's bear our arms and plunge them deep through laughter, through pain, through sorrow, through hope, through disappointment, into the very depths of the souls of our people, and drag forth material, crude, rough, neglected, then let's sing it, dance it, write it, paint it. Let's do the impossible. Let's create something transcendentally material, mystically objective earthy, spiritual earthy, dynamic. Douglas received most scholarly attention of the Harlem Renaissance illustrators. Projects Douglas did made him a leader in the effects to advance African American art and culture in the U.S. Douglas painted a patterned Africanist style and focused on present and past black life in the U.S. A can do between this common black past and the diasporic black nation. This brought convergence. Similarities are the conception of self warped by prejudice and common American stereotypes. This creates the new Negro. Differences include Douglas not painting white art painted black, but did create an art that merged white and black, with both European and African roots and also influence of Egyptian, Cubism, and Art Deco. Locke encouraged artists to look to modernism, not their roots in Africa. As a student under German artist Winold Rice, modern illustrator, designer, and painter, he studied mural painting. Rice was among the first to persuade Douglas to look at African sculpture and develop an African-American interpretive design style based on African motives. He painted murals at Fisk University and later became a professor at Fisk University. J. A. Rogers had an op opposite opinion of Locke's position. He noted that its home was in Harlem. Jazz is one part American and three parts Negro. It is really at home in its humble native soil, wherever the modern, sophisticated Negro feels happy and sings and dances to his mood. It follows that jazz is more at home in Harlem than in Paris. Someone had to have it first. That was the Negro. The musician is an emblem of the intersections of African heritage, African American culture, and natural identity. You have Louis Armstrong on trumpet, Ella Fitzgerald was queen of jazz, and Billie Holiday and many more who were incredible musicians and singers. A song I learned about in history class a couple of years ago was Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit. It was such a touching song and brave women rose up through music art, sculpture, and poetry.
Langston Hughes was one of my favorite poets. I too, I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. I too am America. Langston Hughes